Now let's look at the information in these relationships in a little more detail. And you'll notice that uh, for each of the relationships in a crow's foot ERD, there are marks next to um, each of the two entities in the relationship. So there are two marks here next to vendors, and there are two marks here next to invoices. And the way it works is uh, you'll have one mark that's close to the box, right next to the box, and then you'll have one mark that's further away from it. The mark that's closest to the box refers to something called the maximum cardinality. And the mark that's farther away from the box refers to the minimum cardinality. So what does cardinality mean? Cardinality means count. And when you're talking about databases and lots of other things in computer science as well, um, the important counts are zero, one, many. So in an ERD, Crowsfoot ERD, the count that's closest to the box refers to the maximum number of items that can participate in the relationship. And so we see, for example, that when you're talking about the relationship between invoices and vendors, for a particular invoice, for one row in this invoices table, the maximum number of vendors that can be in that relationship is one. So each invoice has one and only one vendor. So maximum one. And then the one that's farther away refers to the minimum cardinality. And uh, we see that that's a one as well. And so there's exactly one minimum and exactly one maximum. Sometimes this is referred to as mandatory. So that means that an invoice has to have a vendor and can have at most exactly one vendor. Now, if you look at it from the other perspective, how many invoices can a particular vendor have? So I have one row in the vendors table that corresponds to one vendor they can have a maximum of many invoices. So this little um, crow's foot means many. This means one vendor can have many invoices maximum. Now it's possible that you have a vendor that doesn't have any invoices, but that doesn't affect the maximum number of invoices that a vendor could have. So a vendor could have many invoices. The minimum number of invoices is this zero here. And so you can have a vendor with zero invoices, or you can have a vendor with many invoices. So an invoice has exactly one vendor. A vendor can have zero too many invoices. Same thing here. If we look at terms and invoices, we see that each invoice has exactly one set of terms, minimum one, maximum one, a set of terms can have many invoices with that particular set of terms or can have no invoices with a particular set of terms. So if I make up a new set of terms, like uh, um, you don't have to pay me for 20 years, that's a new set of terms, but I don't have any invoices that use that particular set of terms. Um, I could, at some point in the future, create multiple invoices that use that new set of terms and then it goes from zero to many. You'll also see um, a relationship like this between invoices and invoice archive. So here, the maximum number of invoices that can correspond to an invoice archive record. So I have one invoice in invoice archive that corresponds to at most one invoice in invoices. It wouldn't make sense to have one invoice in Invoice Archive correspond to many invoices because um, each invoice is a separate thing. And similarly, each invoice in Invoices corresponds to at most one invoice in Invoice Archive. So this is called a one-to-one -one relationship because exactly one thing over here is related to exactly one thing over there at most. You'll see that um, this is also has a zero next to it for the minimum cardinality. So um, if you see a one here, 
that means that it's mandatory. If you see a zero here, that means it's optional. So this says that an invoice and invoices optionally has at most one invoice archive record and an invoice and invoice archive has optionally at most one invoice in invoices. So you'll see a one-to-one -one relationship. This one here where you have at most one vendor and at most many invoices, that's called a one-to-many relationship. Sometimes you'll see it referred to as a one-to-n relationship. So n can be any number. And this is a one-to-n relationship or a one-to-many relationship. So you'll see one-to-one. -one, you'll see one-to-many. In a fully fleshed out ERD for a database, you will never see a many-to-many -many relationship. And we'll learn more about that later on when we get to data modeling. But the way tables work, um, one of the requirements for something to be in a table is that you're not allowed to have multiple values in a particular um, column in a particular row of the table. So if a vendor had many invoices and we had an invoice ID column inside a vendor, we could have multiple values for invoice ID, right? A vendor has five invoices, so a particular row in the vendors table would have five values of invoice ID, but that's not allowed. You can only have one value per row in this table in that column. So you can only have one invoice ID here. So you can use um, something like FK invoice ID, a foreign key for invoice ID here in a vendors table, if the maximum cardinality is one. But if the maximum cardinality is many, you can't put FK invoice ID in this table. Instead, you have to put vendor ID in this table and then have the maximum cardinality for that be one. So the way I represent the relationship, a one to many relationship, is that I have the primary key in the table that has the one side, and I have the foreign key in the table that has the many side. So the foreign key for a one to n relationship is always going to go on the many side of the relationship. And as I said, we'll see that more later on. The problem with a many to many relationship is that you can't put the foreign key here because this is many, and you can't put the foreign key here because this is many. So it turns out there's no way to represent that given the constraints on not having multiple values in a single cell. Um, and we'll learn how to fix that in uh, the section on data modeling. So you'll only see one-to-one -one relationships and one-to-many relationships. Now, if we scroll down a bit, so let's look at the uh, discussion ERD. You'll see that um, profile is optional whereas user is mandatory. So the minimum cardinality on the user side is one, the maximum card, a minimum cardinality on the profile side is zero. So that means you can have a user that doesn't have a profile, but you can't have a profile that doesn't have a user. You have to create a user account first and then you can add a profile to it later on. You can't create a profile if there's no user to associate it with. So that's an example of a one-to-one -one relationship where one side of the relationship is optional and the other side is mandatory. Now, here is an example of exactly one user having possibly many discussions. So each discussion that you create has to be created by exactly one user, but a user can create zero to many discussions. So when you're writing joins, you don't necessarily need to worry about cardinalities at all. Um, so all you need to know is that this side has a foreign key and that's going to match the primary key on this side. Um, this information will become more important when we get to data modeling and especially when we go to create the actual database.